I've always wanted to be a nurse. I knew that's what I always wanted to be, and I never changed even for a minute. And I really wanted to be a, a military nurse because my dad was military. The Army started a program. It was called the Army Student Nurse Program, and if you were going to a four-year degree program at a university, if you made it to your junior year, they would uh, pick up, starting your junior year, they would pick up all of your room, board, and tuition and give you a small stipend along with that until you graduated. And then you would be commissioned, at that point, a second lieutenant. The main reason I joined was so that I could go to Vietnam. I figured it would be a great learning experience. And my dad was a military for years, and even when he retired, was still military, so I just thought it would be a great learning experience, not only just medically, but personally, too. I just really honestly wanted to do it. When I left to go over there, I was afraid mostly that I would not know what to do medically because I had only graduated from nursing school 11 months prior. And even though I was assigned to a military hospital, it's not the same as a war zone. So my greatest fear, because I was young, <laughs> you know how things change, was that when I got to Vietnam, I would not be able to um, adequately serve medically because I, I didn't know if I was prepared uh, in my training for uh, a war zone. Right when we got off the plane, we took fire because it was an airfield, so th that was a wake-up call. So that shook me up quite a bit. Well, my trip to, to my station um, was kind of interesting. They loaded up a helicopter with, um, oh, I'm going to say, eight nurses, give or take a couple, and it was almost like a bus route. And so they would, uh, they, we started in very southern um, Vietnam, and then we would work our way up to the northern part of Vietnam, and they would, uh, the helicopter would land, and, and the pilots would turn around and tell, you know, just kind of you, you, and you, and they would get off. And so um, it ended up, I was the last one on the helicopter. We landed in this really horrific environment. It was just like a muddy field. And so I figured there must be just refueling or picking up something. It certainly is not a hospital. And they looked around at me and they pointed to me like, it's, this, is, this is your stop. So I got off and it was a wake up call because all the other hospitals, the Quonset huts, they were clean. It looked like a hospital, the, the campus. And this just was, it was just a bunch of mud and, and dust and these really dilapidated buildings, if you can call them that, more like hooches. In Vietnam, helicopters transported wounded from the combat zone to an evacuation hospital. These evac hospitals often meant life or death to a wounded soldier. I'll always have a real a soft spot in my heart for the 85th evac because it was so bad. I mean, just the situation, the environment, the buildings, that you had such an esprit de corps there. It was just south of Way, which was the providential capital before everything started. It was not far from the DMZ. It was, in fact, at that point, the closest military hospital to the DMZ. There had been a hospital in Quan Tri, which was north of us, but it had closed down. With an airfield, ammo dump, and an Army of the Republic of Vietnam, or Arvin training camps surrounding it, the 85th EVAC was prone to being hit by the enemy. Taking fire, it's called Red Alert, and I was on duty, and you're supposed to put the patient under the bed because that would protect them if there's shrapnel or if the roof fell in. And then, then you take off the mattress and you lay it on top of the patient, depending on their injuries. You kill all the lights so that the enemy doesn't know where you are. And I do remember giving a shot with my small flashlight in my mouth. We saw anything and everything. I started out just in the regular surgical post-op unit ward, and then I was on the intensive care ward. And our job was just to fortify the patient long enough and safely enough that they could be vac down to the to further south for the specialist. We had to do what we could, and I have to tell you, most of the times we were quite successful. The doctors and nurses did their very best to save every life but it wasn't always meant to be. 
I kept thinking about the families. I, that's what popped in my mind always was, um, is this someone's daddy or husband, someone's son? I just thought of the family members that were back home who were gonna get um, a knock on the door within 24 hours. And I just really prayed for them. And I just asked for strength for them when, um, when we saw the young man take his last. One thing too, if before they died, if they called out for mama, we were mama. We would, uh, the female nurses would take his hand. Never would a male nurse take his hand because they could tell. So a female nurse always held his hand or they called out for their wife's name or whoever. If it was a female name, we were there and we were that person and we held their hand and calmed them during that difficult passing. When I think back on Vietnam, I have to say, professionally and even personally. I grew there. I think I got stronger there. I learned things that I would have never learned medically over here. For me, I would do it again.